What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well yesterday was an interesting day online after Sony announced that the PlayStation 5 would be increasing in price, different regions all across the world, and the internet reacted, well, as you'd expect. We'll go over all that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about NVIDIA, who has now set up their next big event, and most people expect them to show up with their next big line of video cards. And we're also gonna be talking about the sales in Japan after Kirby made a surprising appearance on the charts. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Splendid. Platoon 3, we had that treehouse yesterday that showed off a bunch of gameplay for it, and it looks really good. I'm excited to jump into the next big Splatoon title, but of course that Splatfest going up this weekend is currently available with a couple of benefits. We can see this over on Twitter from Nintendo of America, saying start playing Splatoon 3 today with the Splatfest world premiere demo. Here's three things you can do right now before the main event on August 27th. You can play the tutorial, you can customize your Inkling and Octoling, and you could choose your team, rock, paper, or scissors. I'm going with rock, definitely team rock here, but let me know which one you're going with down below. A bit more here though from Nintendo of America, be sure to check your inbox too. Everyone who downloaded the Splatoon 3 Splatfest world premiere demo will receive a seven day trial of Nintendo Switch online. So hey, there you go. If you just check out this demo here for a few minutes even, I guess you'll be getting a, a code that'll allow you to get seven days of the Nintendo Switch Online. So if you don't have the online, technically use that. You can check out the Nintendo or Super Nintendo application, or you can even play other titles online after uh, the demo is over here. But I'm excited to check out Splatoon 3. It looked really good in the treehouse. And like I said, I'm going Team Rock, but let me know which one you're picking over the weekend. Also, we had a gameplay trailer that was released for Atomic Heart, which is a game for me that I, I kind of forgot about. It's been flying under the radar, but wow. Take a look at this trailer here, and we also have a bit of a description here, just in case you were unfamiliar with it. The game takes place in an alternate version of the 1950s, where the Soviet Union has made massive strides in scientific research, resulting in robots and other advanced technologies reigning supreme. However, secret experiments have spawned terrifying monstrosities, robots rebel against their creators, and giant machines patrol the wasteland. It's like a first-person shooter adventure game, and I'm looking at this, this gameplay they're showing for the combat, really reminds me of Bioshock. I don't know if it's the art style or just the mechanics they have set up where you're also like shooting these different abilities and like magic all over the place. But uh, yeah, I, I saw this. It's, it's back on my radar immediately now after this one. Um, but it is currently in development for a PS5, PS4, PC, Xbox Series X, S, and Xbox One. And the, the one issue here is the last like release window we had for it was 2022. It's almost September, so I assume it's not coming out this year still, and we can look towards next year. It was also, to my understanding, coming to Game Pass day one, so that's also a positive there. But yeah, Atomic Heart is definitely back on my radar after that gameplay. Oh, and if you're someone who just kind of keeps the Epic Game Store launcher on your PC, just in case a good game goes there for free and you can just claim it, I want to set some time aside to fire it up next week because we can see this over on Eurogamer. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is free on the Epic Game Store next week. That'll be alongside Submerged Hidden Depths. Starting September 1st, running for a week, you'll be able to just sign into the Epic Game Store and claim Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, out of the three that they did for the trilogy in the reboot series, it's, I think, the weakest one, but all three of them are good games. If I had to rank them, it'd be Rise of the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2013, then Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But I still think they're quality, and I think Shadow of the Tomb Raider is certainly worth the couple of minutes it takes to start up the Epic Games launcher just to claim it. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the PlayStation 5 increasing in price. Now, this was detailed in a blog post that was put up on the website by Jim Ryan. And I, it went up at like 3 a.m. or something my time, which to be fair, it doesn't affect the US market. It's for other parts of the world, different time zones, all of this. So that at least makes sense, even though sometimes you push something like this out late at night so that it can kind of avoid some of the press attention. Either way though, it got plenty of attention yesterday. We can see this over on PlayStation blog, PS5 price to increase in select markets due to global economic environment, including high inflation rates. They go over all the different regions here, which includes Europe, UK, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico, 
and Canada. They didn't put the previous prices next to the new prices. Kind of makes sense if you're trying to do your best to spin this with PR. Although, let's be real, there's, there's no easy way or good way to, to spin something like, oh yeah, the price is going up for the this system with no added benefit. But thanks to Gamatsu, we have at least an idea as to how much it's going up in each region. And based on the chart that Gamatsu has here with this listing, it seems to be anywhere from 5 to 10% depending on the region. And from what I can tell, they're, they're mentioning conversion rates, inflation, all this. They're sort of comparing it based on the region versus even the U.S. dollar because they're not raising the price in the U.S. So they've kind of given us our control region as to what they're comparing a lot of this stuff to. And to be fair, the U.S. dollar uh, over the last year has actually become increasingly stronger. So I guess in that case for what they're saying here, that at least lines up. But they say, while this price increase is a necessity, given the current global economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priority continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that as many players as possible can experience everything that PS5 offers and what's still to come. So as I mentioned, it, it, there's no easy or good way to say this if you're Sony. It just it doesn't look good at all, right? And it looks worse because Microsoft came out pretty shortly after and said, yeah, we're not raising the price. The Series S and the Series X, they're just staying at their suggested retail price that we've had set this whole time. Nintendo has essentially gone on record saying they're not raising the price of the Switch, despite all these companies facing the same issues when it comes to supply chain and parts increasing behind the scene in terms of cost. Now, I will at least say this for Jim Ryan. He's kind of the delivery guy right now with this news. I mean, He's in charge of the gaming division, so he gets to deliver the good news, and he also gets to deliver the bad news. And in this case, I, I think you have to look even above Jim Ryan for this one, because Sony has gone across the board with their cameras and other consumer electronics, and they've been raising the prices when it comes to the, the, like the camera itself, and even the shipping costs to get it to you. So this is something that's been ongoing at Sony, and that's one of the reasons, by the way, an investor asked Sony if the price was going to go up on the PS5. Turns out they were onto something. To me, the most disappointing part about this is that Sony didn't come up with a more creative way to raise the price, especially when Nintendo and Microsoft aren't raising their prices. Sony could have looked at and said, okay, this region, it's going up 10%, which amounts to, we'll say $40 or something. Let's add, throw in a, a year of PlayStation Plus, or let's take a game that's even a year or two old, like they could get Ratchet and Clank and just throw it in and make a Ratchet and Clank bundle that just costs a bit more. That way you feel like you're getting some extra value on top of it. Instead, they just said, hey, the price is just going up and that's it. And it looks even worse when you realize, oh yeah, a year ago, they were bragging to their investors that the disc-based PlayStation 5 was not losing money for them anymore. They were actually turning a profit on it. A year later, they have to raise it up 5 to 10%. Yeah, but if you look at the U.S., they specifically said we're not raising the price there. And there are two major reasons that I've seen kind of floating around right now. And I think they're both in play, one being the U.S. dollar being fairly strong. And I guess them looking and saying it's not necessary to do that in a region where it's actually very competitive by Microsoft. They're like neck and neck, the PS5 and the Xbox series in the U.S. And... Sony's focusing heavily on the Western markets, so I don't think they want to do anything that would really hurt them in, in, in the U.S. currently. It's also obviously a very large market, so Sony, while they say it's a necessity, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people look at this and say they're posting record profits. Clearly, they could eat the cost for some of this stuff and just not raise the price, similar to what Microsoft's doing. But hey, Microsoft has a lot of money. They have no problem losing money if they have to for the Xbox series. They've proven that with all these rumors stuff going around about them uh, buying up chip priority even to get systems on store shelves. So a very strange situation. This has been a weird generation in general, hasn't it? So we'll see what happens for Sony here going forward. I don't think this will affect them in the short term because well, demand is still outweighing supply, but when that starts to even out a bit more, will we see Xbox actually continue to maybe move up to where Sony is in terms of their sales. It definitely is a much more competitive generation than it was uh, last time though, between the Xbox One and the PS4. Things have actually kind of flipped around a bit here, especially when it comes to the pricing, because now Microsoft has like 
the cheapest systems across the board. Next up, let's talk about more PlayStation hardware that has the potential to also be very expensive, that being the PSVR 2. And I gotta say, the price for this thing just became way more interesting after what we just saw with the PlayStation 5 console price. But it looks like we'll at least have some impressions from the public who will get to try this thing out at Tokyo Game Show. We can see this post up over on Gamatsu, Resident Evil Village for PlayStation VR 2 playable at TGS 2022. This is the first confirmed publicly playable PlayStation VR 2 game. The reason they're saying that is because there have been a couple of events, hasn't been widely advertised, but the PSVR 2 has been playable behind closed doors. So this will be a time, I guess, where we'll just be on like the showroom floor and you can kind of just walk up and try it out at Tokyo Game Show. And that'll be running September 15th to the 18th. So Capcom will be showcasing Resident Evil Village there. And that, that'll be pretty cool to see some of the, uh, the reactions to it. It seems like a game that would lean in pretty well to the PSVR 2 and some of the new features they have. But September 15th to the 18th, you kind of think that Sony would, would want to maybe talk about the PSVR 2 then ahead of Tokyo Game Show. And of course, we have that PlayStation event or that showcase that's been rumored now for a little while to take place in September, which kind of lines up with how they usually go about things anyway. But there has been some talk around the second week of September, which would be just ahead of Tokyo Game Show. And I would expect there to be some news around PlayStation VR 2 since we keep getting these little breadcrumbs of news like, oh, early 2023, it's coming out. Here's the see-through mode for the headset. When we all really wanna know is what games are coming with it, when exactly is it coming out, and how much is it gonna cost? Well, we'll see if Sony has some sort of PlayStation showcase coming up in the next few weeks ahead of Tokyo Game Show where the headset will just be on display and playable. Next up, let's talk about NVIDIA and their line of RTX video cards. I've been saying for a little while now, hold off buying any video cards, even though we're starting to see them drop in price pretty significantly. Actually, the RTX 3080 on Amazon, I've seen get like down to 700 or 750 and that's actually not bad considering they were like, $1,500, $1,600 or so just like at the beginning of this year. But I have a feeling we're gonna see a new video card get announced by NVIDIA here pretty soon. We can see this posted up by The Verge. They say NVIDIA is getting ready to announce its next gen GPU architecture codenamed Lovelace. Now, this was on a conference call for earnings with investors from the CEO, uh, Jensen Huang, who says, we'll get through this over the next few months and go into next year with our new architecture. I look forward to telling you more about it at GTC next month. If you haven't been keeping up with what's going on with GPUs currently, the demand has been falling for GPUs. NVIDIA has been struggling a bit, but their their numbers were so inflated with all the crypto mining that was going on and how the video cards spiked heavily in price because the demand was just overwhelming. But Thankfully, we're starting to see prices level out a bit now. However, that keynote, it's set for September 20th, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, they, say, they say, I look forward to next month's GTC conference where we will share new advances of RTX reinventing 3D graphics and gaming, AI's continuing breakthroughs, and building the metaverse, the next evolution of the internet. We'll see about that one. But I believe we're going to see the 4090 here. That seems to be the 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 rumor that has really been making the rounds recently. And the RTX 4090, once that gets announced, let's say they try to launch it for this holiday season, I think you're gonna see a lot of cards like immediately show up online. eBay, Amazon, used markets. And yeah, you wanna be careful because you wanna just double check to see what the card was doing before you bought it, obviously, since there are a lot that have been mining for probably months now, just continuously. But, we will see more and more of these cards pop up once that 4090 gets announced. And then probably next year, we'll see like a 4080 get shown off, a 4070 and so on. But NVIDIA, I think is gonna show up here with their, their big, big card, right? Just to show off all the new things it can do as they move to this architecture for next year. So I guess tune in for GTC or at least keep your eyes open to see if we get any big press releases, pricing, release date. If it's for this year and you've been looking for 
a new card that's still kind of in that 3000 series, you know, looking for a deal, get ready because 3080s and 3070s and even 3090s are gonna start popping up everywhere and we know what happens then. The prices start to come down even further. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the Famitsu sales charts. This of course gives us a look week to week at how games and consoles are selling there in Japan. Bit of a surprising appearance here. Let's see, this is the top 10 for games. Nintendo Switch Sports at the top, 18,668. I will admit it was kind of a, a slow week overall. No major, major releases. But then we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which is slowly creeping up to that 1 million mark in Japan. Pretty impressive there. Then we have Minecraft, Monster Rise Sunbreak set, and Take a look at this, Kirby's Dream Buffet. You might be curious, how is that there if it's a digital game? Well, you can still buy download cards. That's right, 7,218 download cards sold th that week when it came out, putting it at number six, which I think for a game that most people will look at as that $15 you know, spur of the moment digital purchase and download, I'd say it's pretty good. Then you have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate there at seven, Ring Fit Adventure at eight, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 at nine, which has cleared that 150,000 unit mark though. So good to see Xenoblade Chronicles 3 continue to move along. Then we have Mario Party Superstars round at the top 10. Moving over to the hardware, we have Nintendo Switch at the top, 58,396. Then we have the PS5, 15,655. By the way, the price increase for the PS5 in Japan, from what I saw, isn't going live until September 15th, but this is certainly something I'm curious to see if it will have any effects when it comes to the sales with these charts since we get numbers every single week. And then we have the Xbox Series, 9,820 units, the 3DS at 152, and then I, I guess 13 people found a PS4 in the back room. So overall, a slower week when it comes to software, but I mean, you gotta give Kirby credit. Kirby's just rolling along right now. Kirby and the Forgotten Land continuing to chart towards the, the top half and Dream Buffet, which is a game I didn't even expect to see on this chart, being there at number six, it's, it is at least impressive for Kirby that for a while didn't have the kind of sales push that we see currently on the Switch. I mean, the best selling Kirby game is still the first one. Uh, not too much longer though, I'd say with Kirby and the Forgotten Land rolling along right now. Sakurai mentioned that actually. Oh, the best selling Kirby game is the one uh, that I originally created. Well, look out for Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Sakurai. That's probably why you put that little, uh, asterisk there. It's like uh, at the time of this recording, because if you record that video, maybe a couple weeks later, might not be the case anymore. But either way, Kirby, very, very strong right now in 2022. And also it's good to see Nintendo capitalizing on this with HAL as they just keep releasing more and more games. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked with the PS5 price increase announcement, do you think Microsoft will follow suit with the Xbox? I asked this before they made their official response, uh, but 80% still said no, Microsoft will eat any extra cost that comes up. And I agree. Microsoft is in a very strong position right now. I mean, it's, it's Microsoft, so they can do things like buy Activision Blizzard. They can also just kind of hang out with their price and eat the cost on it, even if uh, like costs on these parts go up. I think Microsoft's looking at this saying, well, we're already a really good value proposition with Game Pass. Sure, their big first party games are still probably like a year off or so. We'll see when Starfield and Redfall come out. But even just hanging out with that library of games that you get from that subscription service and they have the Xbox Series S, which is a $300 system, it's it's gonna be tough for the general consumer to look around and say, well, that's that's the best deal right there. Why wouldn't I go with that? And I think that's what Microsoft is banking on right now, at least until some of their big titles come out. And as I said, I'm looking towards 2023 for Microsoft to really start spinning up here with some of their games. It's gonna be an interesting generation going forward. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from JVG saying, I'd argue Denuvo actually enables piracy. Pirated modified versions of games with Denuvo removed offer a better experience than $70 games. And you know what's interesting about Denuvo? is most of the time when it's in the news is when people successfully crack and remove it from a game, as you're seeing here, and hey, look, the performance is better. And everyone goes, well, why, why do I have to get the version that is worse when I'm paying for it? And then people are actually cracking and getting the game for free and they get a better experience. It's, it's very strange that Denuvo is even still a thing because sometimes it does get cracked in the first day. And then it makes headlines, basically telling you that the pirated version is better. So the, the whole Denuvo thing has become more and more annoying as we've gone along because 
we all know that it does affect the game in some way when it comes to performance. Micro stuttering, poor frame rates, crashes, it's all been documented. So I, I hope it doesn't necessarily come to the Switch. I mean, the fact that it's being put out there, I'm sure some third party company We'll take a shot at it, but I don't think Nintendo is going to be playing around with that anytime soon. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the PlayStation 5 actually increasing in price a couple of years into the generation. Were you surprised by the announcement? Do you think Sony should have done something a bit more creative, maybe a bundle, or should they have just eaten the cost entirely? And then also, what about NVIDIA seemingly getting set up to unveil a new line of video cards? Are you holding out for that new one, or are you going to try to scope out the used market a bit after that announcement? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.